Today, I'm going to show you how to make a form on pickaxe. Here's an example of a form. That is a place where users can upload a, a file or an image, a text field where they can write whatever they want, and even multiple choice. And when they hit submit, it runs an AI-powered prompt with all, with all those inputs. A form is sometimes better than a chatbot because it offers a lot more control over how the user will use your tool. So let's dive in. Here we are in the form builder. On the left hand side, we're going to build our tool and set some key configurations. On the right hand side, we have a live preview of what our tool looks like that we can test <coughs> at any time. So let's go over here. We'll start with a very simple example. Explain the concept of blank at the level of a first grader. You'll notice this is a user input here. When I click on this, this highlights over. Let's test the tool right now. So if we put in the word gravity, we can see it appeared over here. We can hit test prompt. And here we go, a first grade level explanation of gravity. We can also make it more complicated. Maybe we want two inputs. There I've replaced this with another user input. And not only do we let you put in text fields, there's multiple options. And for this one, I'm going to use multiple choice. So we'll let them pick the level of a first grader, the level of a high school student, and the level of a PhD math student. So now if we select a PhD math student, we'll probably get a much more complicated explanation. And we do. So let's just call this explainer tool for now and keep working on it. There's a lot of other improvements we can make beyond this. Right now we're using GPT 3.5 Turbo, one of the less powerful AI models. We can click here and swap in a different model at any time. So let's say we also wanted to add a couple of rules for explanation. We could simply say the explanation should be two sentences long. Now let's give it a try. Now those are long sentences, but it is, in, it is indeed only two sentences. We can also say the explanation should include a metaphor. We can test it out. And here's a metaphor. It'll be a little bit more apparent if we run it as a first grader. Ah, an invisible friend. Perfect. Let's say we want to add another rule. Well, now we're starting to get quite a few rules. So maybe we want to actually just add a little section, like um, how to explain. We could also just call this rules or whatever we want. There's really no right or wrong way about how to do this. We can add a bullet point for this, a bullet point for this. And now let's say that we want to uh, include the end of the explanation. Should it include a link to www.example.com with the CTA to learn more. Let's give it a try. And there we go. Now, these prompts can get rather complicated. Here's an example of a very involved one that I wrote. But the principles remain the same. We're building it over on the right side, left side, and then we're testing it on the right side. We have our inputs, we have rules, we have different explanations. The principles always remain the same, whether it's a simple or complicated tool. But now, let's show a couple other things. In addition to generating text, these forms can also browse the web, let people upload their own documents, and even generate images. So let's, do, let's try this very quickly. Um, generate an image of blank. Let's say a soccer ball. When we test it, we'll see that we indeed get a soccer ball. But maybe we wanted something a little bit different. Um, style of 3D render, like Pixar.
Perfect, it's a bit different. So now we can do the same thing that we did in the previous prompt. We can make this a multiple choice. We can say Pixar style, Van Gogh oil painting, all sorts of things. Finally, we can also add documents to our tool right here by clicking on upload files or uploading web pages. Now, if we like our tool, we can just go up here to hit the button continue. We're at a final page where we can customize some things like the image, we can upload our own, uh, who can use it, and a couple other things. Once we hit publish, the tool is now live. We can start sharing it, embedding it, and selling it to people. Thanks. I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you.